Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt Citadel deck updated with Tyvar, Jubal and Brawler from Phyrexia All Will Be One. The 3 mana Planeswalker allows us to activate abilities of creatures we control as though those creatures had haste, which can be incredibly effective alongside cards like Blood Tithe Harvester, which can immediately sacrifice to take out opposing creatures. We also have our Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which we can then activate right away with Tyvar, maybe even untapping it with the plus one ability, so we can activate our Reflection twice to copy several creatures and then the minus two from Tyvar lets us mill three cards and then we may return a creature card with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield and as you can see we have a ton of two drops in the deck to choose from including also priest of forgotten gods a one two that can tap and sacrifice two other creatures and then an opponent has to sacrifice a creature lose two life we get to add double black and we get to draw a card so priest we can also activate right away with Tyvar maybe after getting it back with a minus two and then Tyvar also works very well with our mana elves, Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves can also activate right away and potentially be untapped to generate an extra mana. And then we can use all that mana to ramp into a Bolas, a Citadel, which is going to be our finisher of choice here. A 6 mana legendary artifact lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, and if we cast a spell this way we pay life equal to its mana value, rather than paying its mana cost. And if we get to 10 or more non-land permanents, we can tap and activate the Citadel, sacrifice them, and drain the opponent for 10 to close out the game. A lot of our cards come into play with an extra token, so it's not too difficult to get to 10 or more permanents and then we can also potentially make up for the life loss from Citadel using our Prosperous Innkeeper, a 1-1 that makes a treasure when it enters, which can also help ramp into the Citadel, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield we gain one life, and then Zulaport Cutthroat, say 1-1, one, one, saying whenever it or another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one and we gain one life. So it can also be a nice win condition while sustaining us through a Bolas of Citadel, especially effective alongside a Priest, which will sacrifice multiple of our creatures. And then a Priest making two black mana can also help ramp into our Bolas of Citadel, which can be a lot of fun. And then we also have three copies of Wostrider, a 3-2 that enters in play with another 0-1 goat token, which we can sacrifice at any point alongside our other creatures to scry one. So the Wostrider can also maybe help close out the game if we have a wide board and a Zulaport Cutthroat, which will drain the opponent for one each time. And the scry one's also very effective with a Bolas of Citadel in play, as we can maybe scry a lance to the bottom to make sure we can keep casting spells off the top. And then to round out the deck, two copies of Lasso Tap Reaver, a 1-2 that amasses one when it enters, making a 1-1 army token if we don't have one already, so perfect to sacrifice alongside our Priest of our Gun Gods. And then as we mentioned Harvester as removal to go with Tyvar, and then our Fable of the Mirror Breaker does a lot of great things, can make mana with a Shaman token to ramp into Citadel, the second chapter gives us some card selection, can also fill the graveyard to maybe escape a Woestrider for 5 mana by exiling for other cards, Tyvar's minus 2 ability can also maybe mill a Woestrider or help fill the graveyard to escape it, so there's a ton of synergy across the deck. Now one card I couldn't find room for is Mayhem Devil, which would be very good in this deck as well, since we're sacrificing creatures, treasure tokens and blood tokens, so the damage from Mayhem Devil quickly adds up to decimate the opponent's board. But we have a lot of 3 drops already, and Tyvar's not the best with Mayhem Devil since we cannot get it back with a minus 2, so I'm leaving it out for now, but I could see other builds that still include Mayhem Devil of course. And then a mana base is pretty tricky, since we want to be able to cast our elves on turn 1, so we need a lot of untapped green sources, but at the same time we also need to have triple black for Bolas' Citadel in a timely fashion, and then uh, enough reds to cast some of our red spells, and at the same time we don't want to have too many of the fast lands, since those will come into play tapped later in the game, so I ended up on 4 copies of Blackleaf Cliffs, 4 copies of the Blooming Marsh as our fast lands, and then our shock lands also don't want to go overboard to take too much damage, so we've got 10 total, 3 Blood Crypt, 4 Overgrown Tomb, 3 Stomping Ground, and then 2 copies of Haunted Ridge as another dual land, and then 1 Swamp to potentially fetch up, as well as Abandoned Mire and Boseju for additional interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn 2 could either go with Harvester or Innkeeper, most likely. Opponent on White Aggro. Alright, so turn 3, I'm guessing Fable. And then for now, maybe Harvester to kill Thalia, which could prevent us from casting Fable. It's 
It's gonna be an aspirant instead. Can still take that out. Could also trade for the officer here, which is also reasonable. And then next turn, play our fable. Aspirant can grow up to a 2 2. Or we can just take 3, next turn, kill aspirants, get the fable going. And then we'll be at 13, about to take 3 down to 10. I think we trade. Does Elvish Mystic change anything? I think I still like getting Fable going. Could also go Priest plus Mystic. And then next turn have a more explosive turn. Which is reasonable. Priest can potentially block a 1-1 token from Adlin. Can double block Aspirant if needed. Alright, fine. Gonna be a lieutenant's pumping aspirants. And a bodyguard to protect it. So we'll take three. And then now probably go innkeeper into strider. And then using the treasure and the two mana from Priest, after sacking Mystic and Goat, we can still play Fable. And this way we gain as much life as possible too. Bodyguard down. And play Fable. And then next turn we can discard Elvish Mystic. And then we're not too far from casting a Bolas Citadel if we draw it. Can activate Priest or maybe attack with a Shaman to make enough mana. Typhor would be a pretty good draw. Hopefully Initiate can destroy my enchantments or artifacts. So potentially an answer to Citadel as well. I would be fine trading Strider since we can get it back. Ooh, a Brave the Elements, okay. Naming black, so a Strider can block. Could still double block with Innkeeper and Shaman. So double blocking Lieutenants seems reasonable. If they fire off another Brave the Elements, that's fine by me. Could also take 7 and then next turn have Priest to activate after attacking with the Shaman. Which is possibly better. They would sack Initiates and then still not necessarily have lethal. Yeah, I'll take it. Because the more creatures for Priest, the better. Take our turn. And we can discard both. Harvester, Innkeeper, not bad. So play Innkeeper, play Harvester. Attack, activates. Priest. Looks good. I guess the Shaman can attack. It does seem like they might have another Brave in hand. Could also just play Innkeeper and then sacrifice Woestrider and Shaman since we'll be able to bring back the Woestrider here. And that's certainly a play we can make. Or I can just play Harvester and then set up for Reflection, potentially copying Harvester, although we could still do that next turn. Because if I was planning to sack Woestrider, I should have attacked with it too. But I think we just play Harvester and pass. And then we can always block and activate Priest in the opponent's turn. Okay, Officer resolves. 
And we don't see any attacks, so our opponent may be building up a large board for Brave the Elements. I'm just going to take my turn for now. And then activate Priests, sacrificing Strider and probably the Shaman, even though it's a red creature that could help in the case of a Brave the Elements. Would also be able to make a Go token that's white. And then we should have enough cards in Graveyard here to escape Strider. Another Fable's nice. So can play Fable, and then still play Strider out of the Graveyard. Opponent does have Hopeful Initiate, as we mentioned, to blow up our Reflection before it copies Harvester. But that's going to be the opponent's entire turn. And in the meantime we can make some progress, gain some more life. So I'll hang on to the Swamp to discard to the second chapter. Back up to 20. Killing initiate now with the Harvester would also potentially run into a Brave the Elements, and then we don't have Harvester to copy with Reflection anymore. But we'll see what they do. Still hoping to draw Bolas Citadel at some point, can start scrying with the Strider, although I kind of like the Sacrifice Fodder for Priest. Adlin, Sir Point tapped out. Sir so Reflection is good to go. Opponent doesn't have the best attacks. So we can block a 1-1 one -one and then Probably fine to double block Aspirant here. Could also jump with a goat, but we'll keep it for Priest. Discard both lands, which will make it easier to escape Strider a second time. And then it's time to activate Reflection on Harvester. Gain some more life. Take out both Lieutenant and Adlin if we want to. Or we can keep Harvester around. Can activate Priest. Have a lot of options. We have four cards in Graveyard, including Strider, so we need to put one more in there before we can escape it. And our opponent explodes. Piece by piece, we ripped our opponent's board apart. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand would have actually been keepable if we had green mana to begin with. Triple Elves ramping into Citadel. As is, I don't think we can keep. Okay, this is better. Mystic into a turn 2 Fable. Probably don't need Cutthroat as much. Opponent also with turn 1 Elf. So opponent on green devotion. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Both decks accelerating their mana early on. Opponent playing some beefy creatures. We're going for some sacrifice synergies instead. Okay, and a lovestruck beast can start beating down at some point. Also blocks our shaman token pretty well. So we're going to have a hard time attacking. And an old growth troll also pretty good against our sacrifice synergies. At least our opponent's on empty. But we've got our work cut out for us. So Innkeeper, probably not at its best here. I think we discard both copies. And then for now, can play... Tyvar get back an innkeeper just to make some mana, or I can play Wostrider to maybe chump with the goat and then start scrying towards more exciting cards. <laughs> I 
and hope our opponent doesn't top deck anything too scary. So we can trump and sack to scry. Priest not at its best here when our opponent has a bunch of 1-1s. One Although it is still a way to draw a few extra cards. Question is if we have enough sacrifice fodder for it. I think we bottom and look for Citadel. Harvester would also be good once we get Reflection going. Just another Mystic. Also matchup where Mayhem Devil would have been pretty good at killing all the 1-1 one -one Elves. Opponent makes a Wolf. At least our Shaman can attack and maybe trade. Trivar allows Reflection to activate right away. So we can also copy a Woe Strider potentially during the opponent's turn as well. Although I can also activate Reflection, untap it, activate again. So that's going to be quite powerful here. So yeah, let me play Tyvar. Activate Reflection. Copying probably Woe Strider to get an extra Goat. And these two can attack. Opponent trades for the Shaman. And then before Strider dies, we'll sacrifice it to Scry. Poseju could deal with Nykthos, although at this point our opponent has all the mana they need. So I don't think we need Poseju. And then we'll untap Reflection, so we can activate again in the opponent's turn and pass. Okay, Cavalier was a good draw, especially if it mills Storm the Festival. They found another Nykthos, at least no Storm. And uh, Kiora in the graveyard, two more copies of Nykthos. Opponent's going all at Tyvar. Okay, so activate on Strider. And then it's going to be tricky to keep Tyvar alive. And then we can sacrifice both goats before damage. Don't need Mystic. Don't need Swamp. So we'll trade for the troll, opponent gets their enchantment. And then next turn I can still activate Reflection twice, potentially copying either Innkeeper or Cutthroat. And now that they don't have any Tramplers, it's going to be easier to potentially Chum Block. Okay, so let's say we... Go double innkeeper plus cutthroat. So we can still cutthroat, activate, reflection, untap reflection, activate again. That looks good. And then. I guess we'll copy Innkeeper again here to get more life as opposed to deal more damage. And get the extra treasure as well. Okay. So Tyvar unlikely to survive another turn here, but we got our value. And then next turn we could look to potentially escape Woe Strider. All at Tyvar. 
potentially. Just a Cavalier attacking. Okay, in that case I'll just take 5, end of turn, copy, cutthroat. And we can do some serious damage, copying cutthroat multiple times. So the cutthroat copy will persist during our next turn, where we find another fable. Alrighty, so let's say I were to copy cutthroat again. And we've got three in play, plus untap reflection, get another cutthroat. We would have four in play. So end of turn the cutthroats will die. First one deals four, second one three, and then two. So we're pretty close to just killing the opponent, so maybe we do attack with everyone here. What happens if we attack with everyone? Then we've got six one ones going through, and for each creature opponent blocks they actually take more damage, since we would have four cutthroats triggering for each creature that dies. So what if our opponent only blocks, let's say, the real cutthroats? Then they would still take five, plus four from the cutthroat dying, and then end of turn three plus two plus one, since the cutthroats die one at a time. So then they might be able to survive, but that would require opponent to know how these cutthroats interact. So let's just go for it. The more innkeepers they block, the more damage they take. There's a lot of triggers on the stack. And end of turn, three more creatures get sacrificed, so that also counts as dying. And there we have it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's missing green, but we do have a double priest cutthroats. So, could be better, but if we find green mana, it's not bad. Opponent on green-white, there's our green. I think we still play Priest, and then next turn I could go Innkeeper plus, let's say, Cutthroat to activate Priest, play another Priest, or maybe we sack the Priest and then play Cutthroat. It's our opponent on Angels. Alright, definitely want to get rid of the Bishop, and then probably don't need two active Priests, so we'll just go Innkeeper, play Priest, activate Priest, play Cutthroat afterwards. Would love to find a Tyvar. Lazata Prever could also be quite effective. Opponent with Taplands, second bishop. And there's Tyvar, excellent. So Tyvar gets back Innkeeper. Can even play another Innkeeper first to gain some more life back. Activate the Priest, drain the opponent for a bunch with Cutthroats. Take it from there. Probably won't need Boseju in this matchup, unless our opponent's playing Book of Exalted Deeds. Talk about this fight for centuries. We're in this together. And then maybe we'll draw something to cast afterwards, using the treasure and the two black mana. Fable would be excellent. And elves I might want to hang on to. Just hit for one. Alright. Can play the elves next turn to activate Priest again. Inspiring Overseer is not bad, since her opponent probably doesn't mind sacrificing it. And a speaker. Okay, so our opponent will be able to take out Tyvar next turn, sacking the speaker, but we can do some damage in the meantime. Cutthroat plus elves. Activate priests. 
and then also make sure to tap on or else for mana first. Hope to draw something we can cast. Another priest counts. So now we can untap priests or just activate the second one. And then we'll be able to keep time for our round a little bit longer. But I guess it doesn't hurt to untap the priest. Opponent actually chose to keep speaker. So we don't actually have to activate another priest um, in case we draw better sacrifice fodder next turn and then now Tyvor can minus two next turn as well get another cutthroat and we can just attack with a priest does cutthroat attack probably not i'll play marsh in case we draw citadel yeah i'm surprised they uh sacrificed a flyer instead of a speaker which they're nowhere close to activating but maybe they're hoping for a collected company to gain a ton of life. So that's the scarier card they could have here. Possible they have a Skyclave Apparition to get rid of Tyvar. Alright, opponent's gonna pass with presumably company at the ready. Found a Fable, that's nice. So I can minus get back another Cutthroat. Or maybe see what else we find. And then play Fable, we've got double cutthroat in play, activate Priest, that's going to be a lot of damage incoming. So let me start by minusing. This was an Mill the Worst Rider as well, excellent. Find cutthroats. So now I could escape Worst Rider and then sacrifice that to the Priest instead of Fable. And then I can still play Fable with uh, extra mana from Priest, actually. So keep as many creatures in the graveyard as possible. And I might actually just sacrifice another Priest and the Goat, so we keep Strider. Although both of them could work. So we'll see a company response. Nope, march on the priest in response. Just sacrifice that to the strider. Drain for two. And harvester we can keep. And our opponent dies. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. I don't think I can keep this hand, unfortunately. No red for Fable. And then we're pretty far from casting a Citadel. Cutthroat doesn't have any sacrifice synergy to go with it. This is better. Mystic into a turn 2 Fable, hopefully. Up against Mono Red Aggro. So our elf is unlikely to survive, but we'll give it a shot. Take one from Soulscar. And Stomp will take care of Mystic. So I could take two to play Cutthroat, that doesn't seem worth it. Just go tapped Blood Crypt and pass. Okay, Eidolon's gonna punish casting cheap spells, so that's a problem. Get our Fable going. We're at 13. So we gotta find a Blood Tithe Harvester to take care of Eidolon. Or just gain some life back with a Cutthroat. But that's easier said than done. Okay, opponent's offering the trade. Possible they have another Eidolon in hand. Of course we could also use the mana from our Shaman token. But I think I should just accept the trade. Okay, opponent passes. So they may have a bunch of expensive cards in hand. Could also discard some cards in order to eventually escape Woe Strider. So let's say we get rid of Cutthroats. Although maybe we just discard Woe Strider. 
since Tyvar can also mill to get some stuff back. And then play another Fable. And next turn with a land I could play Tyvar and potentially activate a Harvester right away. Okay. A Reaver plus Priest, also a great combo. Gets better once we have a Tyvar in play. So, discard Reaver. Tempted to hang on to Priests, although this turn we could just Tyvar, Reflection copies Shaman, and then we could still play Priest afterwards, which seems great. Citadel, we're unlikely to use this turn. Alright, let's go for Tyvar. And then try and get immediate value by minusing. We're in this together. Could also get a Mystic, which can then make a mana, although I'm planning to activate Reflection here. So in that case, Cutthroat versus Innkeeper. Kind of like the Innkeeper here to make a treasure. And then Reflection, Copy Shaman. That works. Gain some more life. Both can attack. Yeah, what a strange game. Opponent suddenly not keeping up the pressure, so possible they're more of a rent devotion strategy with a higher curve, and they just have a bunch of expensive cards in hand that they cannot cast. So if I play Priests, Sack, Shaman, and Innkeeper, and then I could still play Harvester afterwards. And Harvester kills the second Soulscar Mage. Or we can just play Cutthroat. I think clearing the board is fine here. Even though we could later copy Harvester with Reflection, we're not going to lack good targets for it. Okay, nice and clean board. We'll keep all our spells in hand. Goblin Chain Warlord could have been incredibly effective with Soulscar Mage, turning the 1 damage into minus 1, minus 1 counters. Still enough to take out Tyvar here, but luckily none of our creatures die. So Reflection could copy Reflection to make more bodies to sack to Priests. And then maybe we just wait on Citadel and play Cutthroat for now. Copy Reflection. And then Reflection copies Cutthroat. Activate Priests. Sacking the two tokens. Get a bunch of Cutthroat triggers. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so what a strange game here against Monorant, but I'll take it. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Turn 1 Elf. Turn 2 could even go Innkeeper into another 2-drop. But we might want to save the treasure. Opponent on a green deck without a turn 1 elf. It does look like mono green devotion. And turn 2 haven. So against the devotion deck we want to try and apply a bit of pressure since the late game is going to be quite scary. That being said, our hand's not all that well suited for the matchup. May end up discarding a card to the blood token here using Elvish Mystic as opposed to getting in for one. Since we need to find some sacrifice effects to combine with Cutthroat. Troll, good blocker. So what do we discard? Probably one Cutthroat, keep double Innkeeper in case we find Citadel, which would still be a great draw here. Find another Cutthroat and a Fable. That one is a bit more interesting. So play Fable and attack plans. And then next turn maybe discard one of each. Okay, Poon has got 5 mana, so they could play a Cavalier here. Poon maybe looking at a Boseju to blow up Fable. Yep. So we won't get the extra card selection, but we can search up a land at least. And we'll make it... Stomping ground. Well, we're a step closer to Bolas' Citadel. If we draw it. 
Now do we want a double block? Opponent would still get the enchantments. So probably better to trade once we deploy Cutthroat. Another Harvester. Still only one Blood Token in play, so wouldn't be able to take out a Troll. But we can attack with Shaman and Harvester now. So play Cutthroat and probably another Harvester to use a Blood Token to maybe discard. These can attack. Is it time for a Storm the Festival, perhaps? Just another troll. And a Haven. So a lot of mana. Possible they have a Storm in hand since they didn't have the land to cast it this turn. So that's concerning. Now I could double block Harvester and maybe even Elvish Mystic keep Cutthroats. So we don't take too much damage and if we do eventually top deck Citadel We'll have a higher life total, and then before damage we'll use a blood token. Unless we want to use the blood token to kill Paradise Druid next turn. Although with the enchantment and the extra havens they would be able to cast a uh, potential festival anyway. Maybe if I did not trade and then killed Paradise Druids they wouldn't have been able to cast a six drop. Okay, there's Citadel. Now we'll just need an extra land to cast it since we traded our Mystic. But Innkeeper can always make a treasure. Opponent already used their Boseju, so they won't have that to answer Citadel. Priest isn't bad. So this turn, Innkeeper plus Priest. Could have also attacked with a Shaman to make a treasure and then cast Citadel, but don't necessarily want to give up my Shaman that easily. So we'll pass. And then next turn we're ready to combo off. Can use a Priest for mana. Maybe play Cutthroat first so we have double Cutthroat before we sacrifice, which represents a lot of damage. And then finding a Woe Strider to scry would be useful. Oh no. Karn prevents our treasures from making mana now. Finds Karn's Silex, so that can blow up the entire board. So we'll have to do our best to pressure Karn. Opponent just running out of Paradise Druids. Okay, found a land. So I can still cast Citadel with the mana from Priest, which may be the play. Sack Harvester and Shaman to keep as much life gain to go with Citadel as possible. Play Citadel before playing a land, in case we can play Land of the Top. And then cast as many spells as possible here. Hope to find a Tyvar. There we go. Now we can use Harvester right away. Untap the Priest, perhaps. Let's keep going. Another Citadel. So do I untap the Priest here? I think we play another Citadel. Also, if it weren't for Karn, I would have 10 permanents to sacrifice to the Citadel to just kill the opponent here. Finding an Elves is great, since now we can tap it for mana right away thanks to Tyvar. Play this untapped. And then... Make a mana, untap Priest. Or we could minus to potentially find a Cutthroat. Or another Harvester. We have options. But yeah, I think Untap Priest, which gives black mana to play another Cutthroat. You've got this. And draws our Ridge, which we don't need here. Sadly can't use our Treasures or Blood Tokens. There's another Priest, which we can also activate right away. So now with the Cutthroat we should have it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome! Going off with Bolas Citadel against an active Karn. 
All right, so we get to see our Junt Tyvar Citadel deck in action, and the deck can be very impressive once it starts going off, especially Tyvar alongside our Reflection, allowing for some creative plays. Didn't get to cast our Citadel as much as I would have liked, but that's also the drawback of playing a 6-mana card in a format that can be quite unforgiving, such as Explore. So could also see a build of this deck that doesn't play Citadel, and instead makes room for Mayhem Devil as an extra win condition. And then you could also consider playing Collected Company, even though there is a bit of tension with Fable, and Tyvar, which are cards that are very powerful on their own, and that of course we cannot find with our collected company. But for now I've been having fun with this one. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.